Hello everyone, welcome back to the PMF IS Current Affair Test Series discussion. So my name is Ashish Malik and today we are going to discuss the next set of the questions in our part number 2 that is from question 26 to question 50. I hope you have enjoyed the first part and you have learned a lot from that first part and same is what we are going to do in today's class. Now in today's class you will also get to know how exactly to approach a question if in case you are not very confident about that question, what should be the way to approach a question. I mean there are certain questions which you should not attempt, which you should attempt. So that also we will discuss in today's class. So let, let's get started for the next set of the 25 questions. So here the question number 26 that was being asked was with respect to the Chandrayaan program. Now it is very obvious that you are you should expect these kind of questions in the exam because anything which is happening in the arena of space anything that is happening especially in science and technology, in defense. Now these are certain topics which UPSC will always aim for. Okay, so if there is anything that is being done in these particular fields, you should always try to read more and more about these particular topics. These are some of the favorite topics of the UPSC. Now the question was with, with respect to the Chandrayaan program. Okay, now and again, it, it was asking you to which statement is the correct one. So since here we are asked which statement in these kind of at least you have one thing to do. You can eliminate a statement if in case it is wrong. This question is asking you the, the point number one says the Chandrayaan project of the ISRO also known as the Indian Lunar Exploration Program consists of the three missions that is Chandrayaan 1, Chandrayaan 2 and Chandrayaan 3. It is absolutely right. So, so far we have got these three. Chandrayaan-1 was launched in 2008, it was just an orbiter mission, orbiter mission as in its job was just to uh, you know to revolve around the moon to gather the information, it, its purpose was not landing or something, it was just an orbiter mission and this was a successful mission. In fact, it was Chandrayaan-1 that actually gave the world some solid proof that there is possibility of some water presence on the moon, it was Chandrayaan-1. Chandrayaan 2 was something we launched in 2019, it was partial successful, I will not say it is total unsuccessful but uh, it was 95% successful. Chandrayaan 2 then followed by Chandrayaan 3, Chandrayaan 3 is something we have achieved last year 2023 a landmark, landmark 2023 for ISRO because of the Chandrayaan 3. Chandrayaan 3 is the mission which successfully completed its soft landing. The word is soft landing. Why? Because we have used a lander. Soft landing is when you are using a lander, not crashing into anything. You are softly, very softly, you know, launch, launching yourself at a certain surface is called soft landing. Lander was Vikram. The name of the lander used was Vikram. And this soft landing was then followed by a rover. Rover name was Pragyan. Now this was the same objective of Chandrayaan 2 also but uh, it was also a lander and rover mission but it was since it was not very successful Chandrayaan 3 actually did that. Now what makes Chandrayaan 3 so landmark because we successfully have done the soft landing near the southern pole of the moon. It was near southern pole of the moon. The southern pole is very very important guys. So basically what we always see is one side of the moon right. Only one side of the moon is visible because the amount of revolution of the moon is same as the earth rotation. So it is in the tidal locking with the earth. So what we see is only this pole and here we have the north pole. South pole is something which lies at the far side of the moon. Far side of the moon this way. This is the here we have the southern pole. And so far no country has done this soft landing near the southern pole. And why this southern pole is so important? Number one, because of the significance of the location. It is on the other side of the moon about which we know very less. Number two, there are enough chances that we will get some more solid proofs about the presence of the water because that particular side has never really seen the sun rays in a, in a, a, a brighter manner. So there are chances we have some trapped water molecules probably from the time of the formation of the moon that can actually give us lot of new insight, lot of new information about the moon. And third, it was very, it, it, it is always very risky and very uh, tricky to land on the southern pole 
because of the big craters that we have there. And since India has achieved these remarkable things in the Chandrayaan-3, that has made India one of the leading nations in terms of space programs. In fact, after Chandrayaan-3, India became the first country to do the soft landing on the lunar uh, southern pole. And also India became the fourth country in general to do the soft landing on the moon. Before India, it was the USSR, they have done it. USA has done the soft landing on moon and the China also. But these three, they have done it near the equator. Near the equator, somewhere around the equator, not at the southern pole. So this is, this is absolutely correct. And that, that has also explained our second point, which is again correct. So first two points are very obviously, we have explained that. Third point is very important. The Chandrayaan-3, because whenever you, uh, you are reading about any space program, always be careful which particular launch vehicle is used in that particular uh, mission. For example, Chandrayaan-3, yes, it was the launch vehicle Mark 3, the LVM-3. It is India's heaviest launch vehicle. We used to call it GSLV, Geosynchronous Launch Vehicle earlier. The, this is the earlier name. Now we have changed the name to Launch Vehicle Mark 3. Like for example, we have got the Mars Orbiter mission, right? There we have used the PSLV, Polar Satellite Launch Vehicle, which, which, is, of, which is for the uh, medium weight, not very heavy launch uh, vehicle, a medium intermediate level kind of thing. So always be careful about the launch vehicles. So here all the three are correct. So answer would be D, that is 1, 2 and 3. Now moving ahead to the next point, next uh, question, that was question number 2. So question number two was about the open network for digital commerce. Okay, this is very important question guys. So be very careful with the name. Open network is one thing you should focus upon for the digital commerce is something you should focus upon. The name itself has a lot of understanding. Now these kind of questions can be solved even with some kind of common sense. I'll tell you how. If you have just basic idea about what is an open network, what is, what is the meaning of the open network, open software networks are very much common these days. So this particular ONDC, it is a government backed project, aims to enable the small merchants and mom and pop stores. Now what is the meaning of the mom and pop store? It means small businesses. Mom and pop store is a business term used for small uh, and micro business units small micro business units which are independent of any big players. So this particular project is about supporting the small merchants and these people to process technologies that are typically de deployed by the large e-commerce platforms. Okay, large e-commerce e platforms like for example we have the Amazon, we have the Flipkart, you know these kind of, these are the big market players, big e-commerce players. What they are doing is they are actually capturing the market and they are hardly leaving any space for the small business owners, small merchants. That's why this particular network, this particular network of ONDC is about, de, uh, it is about decentralizing the market which is captured by the e-commerce player. Open networks are basically used to democratize the business, the e-commerce business. I mean, we do not want that only the big players should be doing things in the market. We also want the small players to, you know, have their own uh, e-commerce platforms. So that is why to break the monopoly of these big players, this initiative was started by the government. That is absolutely correct. No problem with that. The second statement says, this network is based on the open source methodology. Open source methodology, open specification, open networks, independent of the specific platform, yes. Because that is the only way you can democratize the technology. Open sources are uh, which, which do not have any copyright kind of uh, framework. And uh, you can customize. These, these are very interesting platform. Open networks are where you can customize. You can customize as per your own needs. So second is also correct. The third statement says it will facilitate the local commerce segments across all these sectors which are mentioned. Uh, yes, absolutely. I mean, that is that I have already explained you. And the fourth statement says it will provide common digital infrastructure for the e-commerce for payment, logistic, cataloging. Now, this is this is something you can think very logically. Now, how the smaller players will survive in this market? Small player has to, you know, cut down the cost. There has to be cost saving. And how cost saving can be done? 
only when you are using a common digital platform for multiple operations for multiple things for logistic payment cataloging and all that right so if you apply a common sense here that how these people are going to save money that you have the answer so here the answer would be all four and it's a very good technology read more about it because upsc will definitely be asking you question about the open digital networks and all this is a very good good question to prepare guys okay now the next question question 28 was about the nsil which is called the new space india limited and this is a commercial arm of isro yes it is a commercial arm of isro it was started in 2019 okay this is a very latest addition to the isro now why isro need a commercial arm understand this isro's main object is to do the research and development isro is not a not a commercial entity the whole the core objective of isro is to focus more on the research part okay and whenever you have to launch a launch a, a space rocket or any other satellites it should not be the core domain of isro because ultimately you are wasting lot of time of isro in all these kind of things that's why isro has its own commercial arms like another uh, commercial arm is called antriksh even antriksh is one such arm of isro and then we have this new space india limited and by the way this is this particular uh, uh, you know subsidiary this commercial arm is the one which is responsible for the production of the launch vehicles in india all these pslv uh, uh, pslv and small satellite launch vehicles all these are produced by this particular arm okay so this is absolutely correct no problem with the first statement it is yes it is correct second statement says india's first satellite network portal this which is snp site established in in the mehsana district of gujarat yeah i mean here you can't do you can't do any logic work this is something which is purely fact based so it's good that you keep reading lot of news about uh, these space uh, programs and these uh, satellite networks are very much in the news these days you should read more about them why satellite networks are in the news i mean um, you know lot of lot of big players in uh, today even uh, elon musk is one such person who is very much keen about creating the satellite networks i'm sure you you must have heard that uh, you know a lot of lot of companies they are launching their satellites in a low earth orbit have you heard of that low earth orbit there are three orbits low earth orbit medium earth orbit and the high uh, earth orbit well the leo networks are those where the satellites are launched somewhere around 500 meter till 1200 meter and today lots and lots of companies are creating their own set of you know these kind of networks lots of satellites are launched why they are preferring the low earth orbit because in this particular at this particular altitude you are going to have high speed you can create a high speed network there would be less latency and you can create more secure network also that's why satellite networks are very much in the news and as far as india is concerned so we have got our site in the state of gujarat so these are very good questions to so answer should have been c both 1 and 2 are absolutely correct okay so try to read more about the space technologies they are very much in the news these days next question number 29 is about the goldilocks zone now this is very interesting question a uh, goldilocks zone is something i'm sure you must have read in your ncerts also in in ncerts they have mentioned where they have mentioned the planetary system and all they have uh, uh, and the solar system also they have mentioned the goldilocks zone goldilocks zone is has another name called as a habitable zone habitable habitable zone means where life can exist as the name says where the life can exist this is a goldilocks zone now keep this mind and now read the statements first statement says a region around the star where temperature is just right for the liquid water to exist on the surface of the planet yes so first statement itself is the right answer so what happens basically if like let's say you have the sun this is our star and around the star you have many uh, you know planets so we have the mercury we have the venus but why it is the earth that actually shows life why life is existing not on mercury not on uh, any other planet and even beyond that like after you see so here we have the venus this is the mars so why is it like what is so special about uh, earth that life is existing here then you will say sir it is the water it is the presence of the water on the earth that makes it livable habitable 
and Goldilocks zone means this particular distance, particular distance from that star where you are in a position to have a liquid water and when will we will have this liquid water if it is too close if it is too close to the sun the water will evaporate so any there is absolutely no chance you will have water at mercury or venus if you are too far away if you are Mer mars or jupiter or you know saturn something like that if you are too far away of course the water will be in the present in, in the in, in the form of your frozen liquid right so habitable zone goldilocks zone is that particular distance it is that region where temperature is absolutely perfect neither too hot nor too cold and you have the presence of the water so that is that is the reason the life exists on the earth earth or you can say earth is in goldilocks zone of, of the sun that's why the life exists so both ways it is correct remaining statements you can simply apply your common sense and you can rule out for example second statement said that uh, goldilocks zone is a region where gravity is right for planet to have a stable orbit well gravity definitely has an impact on the orbit but gravity is never going to have an impact which is so impactful where the the life can be decided so gravity is not going to have that much effect on uh, you know climate or temperature that is not the case and you can rule out this statement as well now the third was the region around the star where the radiation is just right for the planet to have atmos protective atmosphere and magnetic field. Well, do you think the radiations? Radiation also has an impact but not a direct impact. Radiations are not going to decide the, uh, the atmosphere and magnetic field in general. There are other factors also which decide them. So this can be ruled out as well. And third is again you can rule out. So clearly Goldilocks is not about the luminosity. Uh, it is not about that light because when it comes to luminosity it is already there on mars uh, already there on uh, venus and mercury but it has to be liquid water so please be careful about the goldies goldilocks zone it 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 comes in news very often so whenever there is a discovery of a protoplanet especially whenever there is any news about the protoplanet they always mention that this protoplanet is in goldilocks of star so and so so that is how they mention so be careful about the news and next time whenever you read about it or you see this uh, word try to relate it what I have just explained to you okay if this you want to see the picture here is the picture of the Goldilocks zone where exactly the blue circle is perfect question number 30 was simply a match the following kind of question I mean there is absolutely nothing you can apply logic here but uh, some some logic you can apply not everything like for example there is animal and they have mentioned the threatened level by the way these threatened level are given by IUCN okay IUCN maintains a red list and IUCN International Union for the Conservation of Nature and Wildlife they give a conservation status of a particular animal and they tell you about the threatened level so number one was the chinkara chinkara is of least concern yes it is least concern because you have the presence of chinkara in multiple countries so it is in india pakistan afghanistan and iran also so yes and, and these are the smallest uh, uh, antelopes they are one of the smallest antelopes like very similar to deer so they have a presence though though it, it is a schedule one animal in india it under the wildlife protection act it is a schedule one animal it has given enough protection but the status is least concern so that is correct this this statement is good the second is about the guam kingfisher and it is extinct in wild yes this statement is also correct this this match is also there so guam kingfisher was in use uh, quite some time back because extinct in wild means it is now available in only captive form it is only uh, you know available in the captive areas like zoo or the bird sanctuary only there not present in the wild in in its natural habitat it is not available so basically what happened guam guam is an island it's an island um, uh, 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 you know occupied by united states so by chance what happened especially after during the second world war or, or after the second world war so a lot of uh, uh, you know brown tree snakes were uh, uh, there uh, due to the introduction of these so the brown tree snakes acted as a uh, alien species and it was an invasive species for them 
and because of the introduction of those snakes the guam kingfisher was totally uh, it was a drastic it was a disaster for this particular species so first and second are correct now there is problem with the statement number 3 it is the sperm whale sperm whale is not endangered it is not endangered but it is vulnerable it is vulnerable it is not purely endangered because we have lots of lots of Uh, mechanisms to protect them though sperm whales are always at risk sperm whales are very much uh, uh, at risk because of the you know they have a special oil uh, sack with them they have special oil sack with them and the perfume industry always look out, look out for those those kind of oil sack right but they are not endangered they are vulnerable and last you can solve at least with some common sense the african cheetah cheetahs are very much in the news it was in the news after the cheetah reintroduction project right but the see there are two type of cheetahs so if you if the question would have been about the asiatic cheetah now that is actually endangered one that is endangered but it is the african cheetah african cheetahs are quite uh, uh, you know better in a better position so they are they are vulnerable one so here the right answer has to be only three so uh, first second and fourth are correct second not correct Okay, and do read more about the cheetahs because cheetahs has been reintroduced from where? From Namibia. So from Namibia, we have uh, we have introduced the cheetahs. And what? Which one? The African cheetah is is what we have brought from Namibia. Namibia is in Africa, and we have introduced in the Kuno National Park in Madhya Pradesh. Okay, chalo. So that is also done. By the way, this is this is uh, Chinkara I was talking about. Okay, this is Chinkara, and this is the sperm whale. Okay now question number 31 it was again a match the following but this time it was about the place and why it was in news recently now this is one of the most important type of question if you if you will see the question paper of the last 5 years you will understand upsc is very much keen to know more about the places in news and that is where your knowledge of the current affair comes so it is my advice to all of you whenever you read current affair just and especially if there is any if there is a mention of any kind of uh, uh, you know place it is always advisable to go and check it out on the map okay just don't read about the region please go and check out that region on the map you never know that may come as an uh, as an as a question in the upsc so four statements four places are given one is called the orkney it is an archipelago archipelago means a group of islands Uh, exploring the alternative of joining Norway. Yes, it is true. It was actually news because of this region. So, if you go to the Scandinavian region in 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 the north of UK, uh, if you go, you have this island called Orkney. Though right now it is a part of the Scotland, but it was in news because it it has always said that Scotland has neglected its development. Now now they are willing to join Norway. that is why it was very much in the news don't worry i'll show you, show this on the map okay so orkney is absolutely correct the second is about the nantare nantare is saying it is saying it is the capital of solomon island absolutely not a capital of solomon island by the way solomon uh, island capital is this this is the capital this is uh, hoinara is the capital of solomon island okay and uh, nantare is basically a place in uh, france it is place in france it was in news when um, uh, you know a police officer has shot a 17 year old and that why uh, and there were a lot of wild uh, violent protest in uh, uh, france now this is a place very near to paris okay so do take care of this place it's a it's a very important one now honara is the capital of solomon island so obviously second is wrong third is also wrong because they have interchanged you see the two statements have been interchanged and why solomon island was in news because they have signed recently an agreement with the china and you must must take care of the island speci specifically islands of the uh, pacific ocean now this is my suggestion guys because these days china aggressively is trying to you know make a bondage with the islands of the pacific ocean pacific ocean three group of islands we have we have the micronesia melanesia and polynesia okay all three are very important groups and china aggressively is trying to make a good bond is trying to sign agreements with them of course because of the strategic location so it is my humble advice do take care of at least read at least on the map see all the important islands on the pacific ocean 
as well as the Indian Ocean also. It is very advisable. So first is correct, second incorrect, third incorrect because they have been interchanged. Fourth is the Kacha Thebu Island. It says dispute between India Ma Maldives. No, it is India Sri Lanka. I mean it was 1974 when India actually gifted this island to Sri Lanka. And now nowadays it, ha it has always been a bone of contention in Tamil politics. So uh, always there is a demand by the Tamil fishermen, especially given a background of the fishermen issue. A lot of fishermen of India still consider Kacha Thebu Island at, 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 as their own territory and they actually go there and that is when the navy of the Sri Lanka captures those fishermen. You know the fishermen issue, right? It's a huge issue uh, between India and Sri Lanka. So yes, Kacha Thebu Island is not between Maldives. So far there is no territorial dispute of India and Maldives by the way, okay? There is no territorial dispute. So that, that uh, makes our answer as only one pair is correct. So these are the very important kind of questions and they can only be solved if you have a very strong hold on map and if you have a very strong hold over the um, over your um, current affairs okay. Now you can see on the map this is this is the island I was talking about the Oranke island and it is willing to you know get affiliated by the Norway okay and this is the place where I was mentioning the Nantre. And Solomon Island, you can see the three group of islands and it is within the Melanesia that you have the Solomon Island. And of course, Australia has objected the most uh, when China had a deal with Solomon Island because China's, uh, China's too much close presence from Australia is not good. It is also considered to be a, a way how China is trying to, you know, counter the uh, presence of the Quad group. That is also important. Now the next question, question 32 is about the PRISM India. PRISM stands for Parliamentary Research and Information Support to Member. Please read it twice. Parliamentary Research and Information Support. Now keep this in mind and now you read the statement. The first statement says Lok Sabha Speaker established PRISM as a 24 hour research reference. Something you can relate here, right? Uh, a telephone hotline for the member of parliament to provide assistance with the policy issues. Right. This is absolutely correct. The only problem that might be might UPSC do, they can change the Lok Sabha speaker, they can replace it with something else. But always remember, it is the Lok Sabha speaker who has established this PRISM platform. Second statement has some problem. It says, uh, it says the, uh, it provide MPs, it help MPs, assistance to the MPs, in drafting the public member bill, private member bills. No, it, this particular, uh, uh, you know, system is not to help MPs in drafting the bills and especially not to the private member bills. Absolutely not. Second, the purpose is not correct here. Basically, PRISM is to help those member of parliaments which are having their first term. The newly appointed member of parliaments they can actually get assistance from these, this uh, information system to prepare their speeches, to do some research about the parliamentary work. It is not for the uh, sake of helping member prepare the bills. That is a whole together different process. So the right answer has to be A. Okay. And in fact, there is no such mechanism where you can, you can give assistance to the private member. And who is a private member, guys? Private member is basically a member of parliament who is not in a, a minister, who is not a minister, is called a private member, who is not a part of governance. Okay. Question number 33. Now, very, very important question about the laggage point. Now, this is very much in news after India, ha after India's ISRO, has launched its Aditya L1 mission. Now this was a mission guys which was very much in the news because it is India's first solar mission and India is targeting to study the sun especially the outer part of the sun which is called the corona outermost layer of the sun the corona related solar flares so to study all that we have launched the Aditya L1 mission okay so second statement is absolutely correct in this particular way now, the word is Aditya L1. Now, L1 is actually this laggage point. Now, what is a laggage point? You need to understand very, very carefully. So, what happens, guys? Um, in the space missions, the biggest challenge is the fuel. Like, every space mission consumes a lot of fuel, right? 
Now the solution to that problem is the Lagrange point. Lagrange points are basically those points in space where you have, let's say you have the two bodies here. Let's say you have the two bodies and there must be some point, there must be some points where you will see the gravitational pull of body 1 and body 2 get balanced out. Those particular points where gravitational forces of the two bodies, they balance out each other. And here is that position called L1, let's say the Lagrange point. And if you launch a satellite, if you place a set satellite at this particular Lagrange point, because it's a stable position stabilized by the gravitational forces, automatically you will consume less fuel. For longer time you can sustain your operation. That's why Lagrange points are very important for the cost saving space missions. And that is what India has done with the Aditya L1. L1 are those points which are balancing the gravitational forces. Okay, Very stable positions you can run. So answer has to be C. Okay, question 32 was simple, but yes, again, very, very important concept based it, a question it was. Then you have the question number 34 about the Pradhan Mantri Gati Shakti Yojana, PM Gati Shakti. Now, this was very much in the news uh, uh, after the last uh, uh, budget. It was, it was the budget 2023-24, okay. Last budget, PM Gati Shakti was very much the center of the budget, the core scheme of the budget. So do not do not think that you know uh, UPSC can't ask you questions from last one or two budgets also they can they can ask and one more advice to all of you uh, always read the budget very very carefully you must read the budget documents the summaries very very carefully because there sometimes you will get questions directly coming from these budgets budget document economic survey both are of very much uh, relevance when it especially when it comes to the prelims part. Directly questions can be asked about the schemes and all the achievements of the government. Okay, coming back to the PM Gati Shakti. So Gati Shakti, you can very well imagine what Gati Shakti can be. What is this Gati Shakti? You can imagine. Okay, basically this is a program for enhancing the infrastructure of the country. So first statement says Gati Shakti is a national master plan for multimodal connectivity that aims to reduce logistic cost, improve productivity of the industries and employment. Yes. So like I told you, it's an infrastructure development project and especially the multimodal connectivity. Multimodal means when you are connecting the infrastructure by the means of rail, by the means of road, by the means of port, that is called multimodal connectivity. So first statement is absolutely correct. Second says it's a digital platform bring various ministries almost 16 ministries are brought under this one platform why because we want to develop fast infrastructure no common sense we want to develop fast infrastructure we need collaboration by various ministries so that the logistics can be eased out so that the time can be saved right and that is done for integrated planning coordinated implementation of the infrastructure projects yes absolutely correct third says the gati shakti will incorporate infrastructure schemes of various ministries, Bharat Mala, Sagar Mala, yes, of, of course, everything is under its particular domain. And last says, Gati Shakti will leverage technology and special planning tools because of course, we need technology. It is a tech-driven India. We are in a digital India mode. So it is a tech-driven initiative because we want to optimize the uh, utilization of existing planning infrastructure. It is absolutely correct. See, if you, these kind of questions, if you know the basic, if you are, if you know the basic of the scheme, what at least what this scheme is all about. If you know these particular part, you can solve the rest of the part. So always be careful. Any question which is based on the government scheme, you just need two information. One, what this scheme is about, the aim, objective of it. And second is the ministry. If you know these two basic things, you can straight away go and attempt that, that kind of questions. And especially if the questions are having multiple statements, the thing becomes very easy. I personally feel the, you know, the questions having two or three statements are a bit more tricky. If you have multiple statements, of course, you can eliminate something. You will always be in a position to interrelate those kind of things. So here, the, all the statement, uh, the answer has to be D. Okay, that is absolutely correct. Then comes the question number. Uh, 35 which is about the Jal Jeevan mission. One more question on the scheme guys, very very important. Now Jal Jeevan mission is something which has gathered attention 
बिकॉज इट वॉज अ पार्ट ऑफ द प्रधानमंत्री मन की बात इट वॉज टू थाउजेंड नाइनटीन वेन प्रधानमंत्री इन इट्स मन की बात हैज लॉन्च दिस पर्टिकुलर स्कीम नाउ यू हैव टू फाइंड आउट हाउ मेनी स्टेटमेंट्स आर करेक्ट इन दिस पर्टिकुलर वे इट इज अ सेंट्रल सेक्टर स्कीम सी प्लीज अप्लाई द लॉजिक जल जीवन जल जीवन इज अबाउट द वॉटर राइट एटलीस्ट यू कैन मेक आउट दिस वन इज वॉटर अ यूनियन सब्जेक्ट नो इट्स अ स्टेट सब्जेक्ट ओके सो इट इज नॉट गोइंग टू बी अंट्रल सेक्टर स्कीम वाई इट इज नॉट गोइंग टू बी बिकॉज अल्टीमेटली यू हैव टू शेयर इट द फंडिंग विद द स्टेट्स तो फर्स्ट स्टेटमेंट इज रॉन्ग जल जीवन मिशन इज सेंट्रल स्पॉन्सर्ड स्कीम सेंट्रल स्पॉन्सर्ड स्कीम्स आर वेर द फंडिंग इज बींग शेयर बिटवीन द सेंटर एंड द स्टेट्स ओके बट ओवरऑल इंप्लीमेंटेशन टू बी डन बाय मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ जल शक्ति इट्स वन ऑफ द फ्लैगशिप प्रोग्राम्स so first statement is wrong okay second statement says the responsibility of the planning approval implementation operation under jal jeevan lies with the central government i have just mentioned if you know basics of the water management if you know the water comes under the state domain it's a state subject of course the responsibility is not going to be on the central government it has to be done by state and the union territories the overall guidance will be given by the central government but rest other things are not going to be their domain right so you have to rule out the second part as well and then comes the third part now under this particular mission the pani samitis have been constituted in the gram panchayats with at least 50% women members suitable representation to the marginalized section yes absolutely why dekho this jal jeevan mission is about to uh, it is it is all about to you know give safe safe and adequate supply of the water okay supply has to be adequate and safe and that is to be done by by the tap like every household in india in rural india especially has to have a tap connection for safe adequate water supply and they have given the supply as 55 liter per day per person that is the kind of supply they are maintaining so for that kind of thing to be implemented you need some grassroots level organization and in this case we have the pani samitis especially when it comes to water it is the women of the country who are going to have the more responsibility towards water because they are the they are they are the one taking care of all the water related matter in the family so there has to be a reservation for them now 50% is something you have to remember there is no logic behind it you just have to remember it so answer has to be one it is only one 35 has to be only one moving ahead moving ahead with our with our statement so we have question number 36 now which of the following statement is correct about the survey of the villages abadi and mapping with improvised technology in village areas uh, swamitwa scheme okay now this this scheme is very important guys and if you read the whole name of the scheme you will get a bit more idea about the scheme okay now what what does it say it says the survey of village abadi abadi is population and it is about improvised technology in the villages area okay fine that that still makes some sense to us now first statement says it's a central sector scheme of the ministry of panchayati raj that aims to provide legal ownership cards to the rural property owners okay uh, there is one problem i can see straight away so like i told you every scheme you have to remember the aim objective and also remember when at least you should know when the scheme was launched the swamitva scheme the swamitva scheme is not implemented in 2017 i can straight away find one fault in there okay one fault is this particular third one because this scheme was uh, was uh, launched in 2020 and pan india implementation happened after 2021 only so straight away i can see there is a fault in statement number 4 even without reading above statements i know there is one statement which is wrong for sure so i can straight away eliminate at least these two things then you have 1 3 and 1 2 3 are in place okay now third is absolutely correct there is no problem uh, this statement is about this and uh, ministry is also correct so answer has to be c guys answer has to be c because this particular scheme is about how you can you can give legal ownership to the rural property owners and that to using some technology 
you need to have some uh, tech base you have to have some gis based plans uh, for every village so all th first three are correct the answer has to be c because fourth is straight away a wrong statement guys okay now moving ahead with the statement uh, question number 37 now considering the following about the Deen Dayal Antode Yojana, the National Rural Livelihood Mission. Okay, now this, this again is very, very important. Though this scheme was in use for quite some time, but now it has become even more relevant because the we are talking about the rural employment, we are talking about hitting the poverty things and all. So that is a very important uh, thing. Look at the first one. So this Deen Dayal Antodya Yojana, look at the first statement. It says it's a center sector scheme of the Ministry of Panchayati Raj. No, absolutely not. It is not. Straight away you can reject this first statement. The second statement, it of course this uh, this particular mission, it is, it's a poverty alleviation program. Okay. The major objective of this program is the poverty alleviation. It is to tackle the poverty. It has nothing to do with the drone technology or the land parcel. Now these two statements are actually correct for the last scheme that we have discussed. The Swamitva scheme, the first two belongs to those particular um, uh, scheme, not the Deen Dayal Antode Yojana. Antode Yojana is all about the poverty alleviation scheme. The third statement and the fourth are correct. The third says it is about promoting the livelihood through the activities, skill development, giving credit, because these are ultimately, you know, it is about poverty elevation. You can relate here that it has something to do with giving credit to the poor, to the non-farm enterprises. And another way of, you know, tackling the poverty is the statement number four. It is the financial inclusion because, you know, financial inclusion is one of the major pillars of the poverty elevation. How you will remove the poverty? The one of the one of the many step is when you financially include the people connect them to the formal banking system. So even if you know very basics about the poverty and how the poverty alleviation schemes work, you can still rule out the wrong ones and you can find the right ones. So right, right answer has to be only two, that is three and four. But be very careful. UPSC will trick you with the wrong ministries. They will always come out, out of this. So it is, it is something you have to figure out. And this is centrally sponsored scheme of Ministry of Rural Development, not the central sp uh, sponsored sector one. So it is it is this one centrally sponsored. Again, the sharing is done by the sharing is done by the center and the states. Okay, very important. And the core is the poverty elevation. Question number thirty eight is about the statement. It is about the eradication of the manual scavenging. Very very important topic. Very much in news and something which is of UPSC level. Now the first statement says manual scavenging. What is a manual scavenging? At least first you know you should know the definition. Manual scavenging is when uh, when some people are engaged in a work where you have to manually you know you have to uh, collect and uh, you know transport the human uh, fecal human excreta and through from the from the uh, septic tanks and sewages and all that is called manual scavenging. It is not done by the uh, any technology but it is done by the people themselves and it has its root with the caste discrimination also so mostly the people from disadvantages disadvantage or the lower caste they are the one which are made to do these kind of things the first statement says the prohibition of the employment as manual scavenger and rehabilitation 2003 ban the employment of manual scavenger provide for rehabilitation yes of course this is a very important act, the prohibition of employment manual scavenger. They talk about two things. We First, we have to end this practice. Number two, whosoever is engaged in this particular job, they need to be rehabilitated. You need to give them some extra job, some other kind of job you have to give them so that as an alternative livelihood, right? First statement is correct. Second statement is also correct because ultimately, under this particular act, it is the National Safai Commission for Safai Karamchari called NCSK that is being assigned the task. This particular organization was established 1994. Till 1990, from 1994 to 2004, it was having a statutory status. But then after the lapse of that, right now it is a non-statutory body. It's a non-statutory body. And it is the one, the National Commission for Saf Safai Karamchari is the one 
that is monitoring the implementation of the manual scavenging act so all both statements are correct but yes you need to read more about these topics so we are not stretching the uh, discussion but at least try to read about the major uh, you know provisions which are there in these particular acts question number 39 the, this question was about the reward project very very important uh, project it is the reward reward stands for rejuvenating watershed for agricultural reliance through innovative development okay and you are to suppose you have to figure out which statement is the correct one about the reward first statement says it is currently implemented in the all states with the semi arid regions now be very careful here if you have the statements like all only you know these kind of statements you at least have to have a second reading like why they are specifically mentioning it is there is something fishy with the statement and here there is some problem with this one the reward scheme it is for watershed development fine it is for but it is not for the whole of india initially it is done only in the three states of india not all all semi arid regions it is implemented in karnataka initially to develop agricultural reliance over there to rejuvenate the water bodies over there also in odisha and the andhra pradesh so only the three states are chosen because now it is right now it is a pilot pro project pilot project is when you are doing uh, implementing a scheme as a test as a testing it uh, and you are not doing at a pan india level you are selecting a few and then implementing uh, you know at a at a very minimum number of levels if the results are good then you then only you go with the pan india scheme so it is not done for all the state it is only for these three state as of now the second problem is the ministry again i told you to be very very cautious about the scheme and the ministries guys so second is it says it is done by the ministry of agriculture no it is not the ministry of agriculture it is this reward scheme is about the ministry of rural development it is done by ministry of rural development okay and along with it we have the support of the world bank also world bank is is important but not the ministry of agriculture though it looks dekho this is a tricky part it looks like okay this is about the agriculture reliance it must be this but no that is not the case i mean i wish i wish our uh, schemes could have been more uh, simplified could have been more in orient to their names but in reality that is not the case i mean i i i understand if if some of you have got this much wrong i understand it is because of the agriculture so that's why a star mark point be very careful with the ministries in this case both are wrong answer has to be d neither one nor two okay i hope you got the got the gist of this particular span uh, this particular uh, program okay sir so going ahead with the state uh, question number 40 here question number 40 again you have to figure out which statement is the correct one first statement says interstate water dispute act very very important do prepare it it's a must prepare question for the upsc this act empower the president to set up an ad hoc tribunal for adjudication of the dispute between the two states no rest everything is fine interstate water dispute is about setting up an ad hoc ad hoc tribunal uh, ad hoc tri tribunal means a temporary one not a permanent one only a temporary if there is any dispute over uh, a particular river by between the states till the uh, dispute settle down we have a, a tribunal dedicated tribunal for that but it is an ad hoc one but it is not to be set up by president this particular act gives the power of setting an ad hoc tribunal to the central government now this is again very important guys you always be careful what is done by central government what is then done by president so there is always a confusion between these two because one we have uh, you know always in mind president is not the one doing everything so this is the problem here that makes the statement as wrong it is the central government and second very very important what is the important part of these interstate water tribunal act and the tribunals whatever ruling if there is any dispute they will give you a ruling and whatever is the verdict whatever they pass the judgment that is final and binding you can't challenge the verdict of these tribunals even in a high court or supreme court and that is what the second statement is all about 
so it says the neither the supreme court nor any other court has a jurisdiction with respect to any water dispute and uh, it may be may refer to such as tribunal interstate yes absolutely their judgment word it is final you can't question it you can't go to any other court and this particular thing has been mentioned specifically under article 262 that supreme court and other courts are to be kept out of the purview of the interstate water dispute act it is 262 article you may have a question separately on 262 so do read about that also okay so the first is wrong second is correct but the third statement is wrong again now what is what is the problem with the third one it says methur dam is it on the penar river it is not on the penar river guys the river mentioned here here is absolutely wrong it is the kaveri river methur dam is in state of tamil nadu okay and penar river uh, uh, of course is a, as it is an important river but methur dam is one of india's largest dam it is on the river kaveri i'm not saying you have to remember every dam but at least the major rivers of india all the major rivers of india all these uh, himalayan rivers and the peninsular rivers kaveri godavari krishna you know narmada tapi all these at least these you should be aware of the major uh, dams okay don't cram everything but try to do it and the best way to do it in my opinion is is to have a map practice so do one thing today just open up the map of the rivers draw major rivers on the map and try to mark wherever the important dams are there and do it on the political map of india okay do it on the political map of india if you do it you automatically will remember most of the names you when you revise it once or twice i think the names will stick to you very comfortably absolutely no problem guys okay okay now question number 41 is about the poxco act very very important act guys the poxco is about protection of the children from sexual offences act 2012 but it has recently been amended by the central government that's why it is in news even these days okay you have to figure out which statement is the correct one now first statement says it's a gender neutral law yes gender neutral even if a if a boy has been uh, assaulted or a girl both are treated as a victim in a similar manner it penalizes for every form of uh, sexual offenses against the children below the age of the 18 now please look at the statement number 1 specifically they have said that it is for minor for minor minor in india is any children who is less than 18 years old right look at this statement number 1 which is correct straight away compare the statement number 4 it says now very contradictory it says poxco at child defined any person below the age of 16 very straight away so either this has to be correct or this has to be correct and let me tell you guys in india though 16 to 18 is considered as a juvenile i know that it's a juvenile age but for majority of the schemes for majority of these kind of schemes we always consider age 18 in 90% cases you will have 18 years of age as a major minor age distinction okay 16 is only utilized in the case of a juvenile justice act so straight away this is wrong this is absolutely wrong rest first is correct even second statement is correct because it says you have the provision of the special courts in fact there is a there is a fast track courts which are being mentioned for that okay so there is a mandate every court has to wrap up the poxco act and take up the cases at a priority level okay and uh, third statement says it mandate any person having apprehension knowledge that offense has been committed shall provide information yes there is another thing it is mandatory if there is anyone who is aware that some some sexual assault has been happened with some of the minor it is your responsibility you must provide information to your nearest special juvenile police unit it's a it's a must clause okay and later on if if it was it was discovered that you knew about the offense and you have not reported even you will be penalized for that so it it is our responsibility to go and report such things now in this case 1 2 3 correct fourth incorrect answer has to be c only 3 so they go you are not you are not supposed to be a champion of all the knowledge but again by simply figure figuring out how to approach a question you can still solve a lot of question you are, are you getting a point that is the most important point now <clears throat> going ahead with the state uh, question number 42 
42 st question number 42 is about which statement is not correct now be very careful from the last many questions we are doing which is correct 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 now suddenly we have something called not correct so be very careful about it now it says uh, Sugamya Bharat Abhiyan which is called also called as Accessible India Campaign it is also called the Accessible India Campaign it is a nationwide campaign for achieving universal accessibility for person with disability absolutely correct this is very very important scheme and it is very much required scheme also because in India we have approximately 9% of Indian population comes under the definition of person with disability we call them as Divyang also not Viklang but, but we call them as Divyang these days and approximately 8 to 9% of, of our population is the uh, is a person with disability and that is why because we want person with disability to have a to have an equal opportunity in every public domain they should give it should be given equal opportunity and it is also mandated under our article 41 if you go read article 41 of the directive principles of the state policy you will know that even in our constitution it has been mentioned that you we must uh, provide equal opportunities to these people right so taking that into consideration Sukhamya Bharat Abhiyan is all about giving them accessibility now second statement is also correct Chhattisgarh by the way is the only state guys that has given person with disability a reservation as a member in the panchayat that is the only state and 2012 Maharashtra became the first state where they have an independent ministry for Divyang that is again a very fact based question but something that you should uh, remember and spe speci uh, specifically if there is any scheme about social justice I recommend you to mark my words you will have lots of questions coming from social justice schemes so do prepare them do give them a special mention they are very very important for your UPSC exam okay <clears throat> question number 43 was about the universal immunization program which is also about the mission in the Dhanush and this is something we have started uh, way back in 2014 I believe it was 2014 now first statement says Ministry of Health offers free vaccination through the universal immunization program to protect infant children pregnant women uh, from more than 10 vaccine pre preventable diseases okay that is the first statement it says okay now important thing is these universal immunization program and mission Indar Dhanush it is actually about targeting those children those pregnant pregnant women who are either uh, partially vaccinated you are partially or you are totally unvaccinated in that particular case you are being chosen and uh, this is about giving covering at least covering all those kind of diseases which are vaccine preventable so first statement is correct there is no problem with the first one second says mission Indar Dhanush launched 2014 like I like I mentioned here it is about uh, accelerating immunization by reaching out partially unvaccinated children pregnant in the high risk area so second is also correct so both are, both have an interconnection okay UIP and uh, mission Indar Dhanush both are interrelated but there is problem with the third statement guys and why the third statement has a problem third statement says WHO rolled out electronic vaccine intelligence unit called EWIN oh, it is not WHO this EWIN is something launched by the Indian government itself it is the government of India government of India has launched this digital platform called electronic vaccine intelligence network and this particular network is about how we are how we are going to digitize the entire vaccine stock management and it is thanks to even we also have got a lot of benefit even during the covid management we also got lots of lots of benefits during the management of the covid vaccine <clears throat> thanks to the even part okay so third statement has a problem who has nothing to do with even it is purely government of india first second correct so answer has to be b only two are correct okay i hope you have got this uh, though the, the schemes are a bit old but still they have a lot of relevance even in today's upsc exam question 44 is about the two list again so now we have the two list in front of us list one two again now all these are schemes so we have the scheme called Sikho or Kamau and list 2 is all about what this scheme is all about like this is the same thing I told you guys you must remember the aim of the 
scheme and you should also be aware of the ministry. Well, in, these case, in, in this case, all the four are under the Ministry of Minority Affair. Ministry of the Minority Affair. Sikhor Kamau, Ustad, Nai Roshni, Nai Udan. All are the Initiative Ministry of Minority Affair. Now, first is about Sikho Kamau. To provide skill to the youth, yes, that is correct. Ustad, Ustad scheme is upgrading skill and training in traditional arts. So, even the full form, you see the full form is here. Upgrade skill training. So, that way also you can decode the scheme. That, that is also correct. Nai Roshni is about the scheme for the leadership development of the women. Yes, especially all the women of the minorities. We want to give them leadership quality. It's a, it's a six day workshop where they will be uh, they will be made understand about lot of other aspects and nai udan is about students clearing prelims yes all the students that belong to the minority groups if they clear their prelims then for the mains preparation it is the ministry of minority affairs that actually support them so all four are correct there is nothing to explain here it's a factual question and again these schemes has something to do with the social justice and that's why the schemes are very very important in the pdf guys every scheme has been explained in detail so you you whenever you download the pdf please go through them in bit of detail just one thing i would like to mention here nai roshni scheme now has been merged with the pm vikas so there is the this particular scheme now has been merged so be careful about this particular part also okay they may ask you this question about the merging of the ministries now question number 45 is the next one which is about the multi-dimensional poverty index and this is the global one by the way we have two multiple uh, multi-dimensional poverty index one prepared by india uh, which is done by the niti io and this is the global one so first statement says the global multi-dimensional poverty index it's a composite index that measure multiple deprivations faced by individual in the three sector absolutely the multiple dimension uh, multinational multi-dimensional poverty index is all about the three pillars which is health education and living standards these are the three major pillars within that they have 10 indicators within that the 10 indicators are there so first statement is correct no problem second statement is says that global mpi published annually by the oxform poverty uh, and uh, human development which is ophi and the national development un development program which is undp Second is also correct. Now, one thing I would like to say here, whenever you get any question or whenever you are reading any particular report or you are uh, reading any particular index, okay, always the very first thing you have to take care, you have to remember about any report, any index is who is there to publish it, who is publishing it, who is releasing it, that is the first focus. And then you get to the data because sometimes students get too much into, into the data, they forget about who is going to publish it. So you will definitely get at least one or two questions like that. This particular report published by what? Published which of the following. This, this is a very common pattern of UPSC. So next time, whenever you read any index, first thing you have to read about which particular organization, NGO or who is publishing it. Okay. In this case, it is absolutely correct. So first, okay. Second is also okay. Third statement says the national MPI. Now that, that is what I was talking about. So we have two uh, multi-dimensional poverty index. The national one is published by the Niti Aayog. Niti Aayog. This is also done annually. On annual basis, we publish it. The national multi-dimensional poverty index has 12 indicators, while the global one has the 10 indicator. That is also correct. So uh, remaining everything is same. We have almost 95 thing, person thinks we have adopted by uh, adopted from the multi-dimensional global one there are few changes that india india's niti ayog has made so india also have the three pillars the health education and living standard no problem only two extra things we have added like for example in living standard other than the the normal indicators we have also added the banking you know the banking account if you are having a banking bank account or not that is also a part added as an indicator and within health, India has added the maternal health, which is not added originally to the multidimensional one. So maternal health is something we have added. So third statement is absolutely correct. Now I am going to show you the indicators also, guys. Now look at this particular indicator. If you can see here. So we have the health education standard of living. Health 
originally the global one has two nutrition and child adolescent mortality now this is the one added by india in our national mpi which is the maternal health education cover the two things years of schooling and school attendance and the standard of living is something which includes uh, the cooking fuel sanitation drinking water housing electricity assets and now this particular one the bank account is something again added by india so original has 10 indicators but this particular one has 12 indicators the indian one has the 12 indicators okay that is again very very important now comes the question number 46 now this last five are there uh, last five questions we will discuss wrap up quickly so question 46 is about you have to identify that the above paragraph is about which particular phenomena it says the eastward moving through the tropics that recurs every 60 30 to 60 days consist of enhanced rainfall convective phase suppressed rainfall convective phase okay uh, it says during the enhanced phase it increases the cloud cover leading to the cooling effects and uh, uh, lower the sea surface temperatures right okay so you have to now you have the four phenomena in front of you so one is the el nino is it about the el nino or enso which is called el nino southern uh, oscillation the enso one no it is not about that the right answer has to be madden julian oscillation so see why it is correct so madden julian oscillation is a phenomena which is about uh, the atmospheric pressure difference that we have and in madden julian oscillation it's a phenomena which also impacts indian uh, monsoon guys it has two phases this is this is particular phenomena it has two phases so every 30 to 60 days so it it moves across the indian ocean like that so we have uh, we have one phase where we have the convective rising phase where you have lots of rainfall next 30 days you have the suppressing convective phase which is downward convection and that talks about the uh, that talks about the uh, decrease in rainfall okay so maiden julian oscillation impacts our indian monsoon as well it impacts us so right answer is about this indian di ocean dipole is totally different thing iod if you if you see iod indian ocean dipole is about the temperature it, it is about the sea surface difference sea surface temperature difference uh, of arabian sea and east indian ocean it is the sea surface temperature difference of the arabian sea and the uh, east indian ocean okay it has two things so we have the positive iod which is good for our monsoon uh, the negative iod is something we have which is negative for our monsoon which is bad for our monsoon and also there is a connection between el nino and uh, iod whenever we have the el nino el nino always get the negative iod which is again harmful for our monsoon when it comes to enso el, el nino southern oscillation it is about uh, the connection that we have between the you know temperature atmospheric temperature and the temperature of the sea so that is enso and this operate mainly in your pacific ocean so in pacific uh, specifically the central pacific and the eastern pacific okay that is important so here the answer has to be madden julian oscillation so these are the quite kind of questions for that you need to have good geography knowledge you need need to have a clarity of the of the concepts they are important now comes the question number 47 now this is a very straight forward very fact based question it it says that if you want to see this is a fish called blue finned mashir it's a very famous fish if you want to see it in their natural habitat which one of the best place is to snorkel snorkeling is when you go down and you know do explorations under water so where you have to and then the very important part is the natural habitat so basically the question is asking where naturally you find the blue finned mashir okay is it in jhelum no it is in lonely river na chambal no absolutely no now it is it is present in the mota mola river mota mola river is uh, very near to pune it is in maharashtra basically how you will approach these kind of questions now these kind of questions how you are going to approach very very important is dekho these these two particular river luni river is something which is the inland river okay it is inland river 
inland river is which is not going to reach out to the sea you can rule out this jhelum and chenab are both himalayan rivers in himalayan rivers you are never going to find blue finned mashir basically this this particular type of fish is where you find in the deccan rivers of india and deccan rivers of india is the mota mola river that that is how that logic you can apply that okay at least i can i can cross out the himalayan rivers we never have heard of the mashir mashir is something for that you need tropical uh, you know conditions you need tropical waters you need, you need tropical conditions which is absolutely not going to be available in jhelum and uh, and uh, uh, you know uh, chambal river so that you can uh, uh, you know cross check answer has to be mota mola which is a deccan river and it is in maharashtra so i mean these kind of questions is very tricky if you are 100% sure then only go for that if you are not then please do not attempt these kind of questions okay important question number 48 is again very very important this is about the sendai framework sendai framework hyogo framework both are important there are two important frameworks we have seen and but the question says these two frameworks has a connection with which of the following is it about intellectual property rights no cyber security absolutely no it is about the disaster risk reduction i mean of course it's again a fact based but i can tell you a very interesting technique how to approach these kind of questions how let's see now you see these two are the cities of the japan sendai and hyogo both are the cities of japan okay and you know japan is one such country where you will have the maximum number of disaster management planning why japan has maximum maximum disaster management planning because japan itself is the is probably one of the most vulnerable countries that has a very negative impact due, due to the disaster uh, due, due to the disasters and that's why every big convention of disaster management you will have in japan hyogo sendai and all these frameworks okay got it so if by chance you even have to give it a chance even if you are not aware of it you just have to you know do the trick work also but at least do the trick with trick work with some kind of logic so sendai framework has a connection with the disaster risk reduction answer has to be c now in the detail part of the of this uh, uh, you know sendai framework it was hyogo framework which we used to follow from 2005 to 2015 in 2015 this framework was updated and replaced by a new framework so right now the world from 2015 to 2030 it is a sendai framework it's a standard framework it's a it's a international standard of for the disaster management that we are following okay and if you want to read more you can read it from the from the pdf just go go to the pdf and you will get to know a lot of things about it okay so basically in this uh, you uh, you the ultimate goal is to reduce disaster risk and losses and there are four priorities you will find with the sendai framework like understanding disaster how you can strengthen the governance how you can invest in the disaster reduction and also enhancing the disaster preparedness in total it it has seven goals which are there you can mention these are the seven targets which the world is going to achieve by 2030 question number 49 is again a very very important question but let me tell you this is not something you can ever trick i mean if you this these are very specific kind of questions guys the question was about the kind of organisms and how many of them can be utilized as a bio fertilizer or a, or a bio um, a fertilizers now bio fertilizer is one such fertilizer is it's a kind of a fertilizer which utilizes which uses a live bacteria or live not exactly bacteria but at least live microorganism you can say that is why the name is bio bio has means something that has life okay so bio fertilizer is going to have some kind of live microorganism in them and because of the, that live microorganism we are going to increase the soil fertility the soil fertility will go up definitely right and it will have some positive impact now <clears throat> out of the three we have the uh, we have the agaricus we have the nostoc and we have the spirogyra well in this particular one if you have no idea then my suggestion please leave it don't get into the trap of the upsc and you should leave it without any doubt just let it go but if you have to attempt it you can see nostoc is one such kind of uh, fungi it's a it's a bacteria 
that is actually utilized for the biofertilizers. Rest two are not the case. So answer has to be B only. And why I'm I'm telling you this particular nostoc, it's a it's a kind of cyanobacteria. Cyanobacteria, it's a blue green algae that is there. Okay. The agaricus is basically a mushroom. It's a mushroom. We do not use it in biofertilizers. So one is definitely definitely not the case. Spirogyra is also uh, it is also a blue green. It's a green algae, not blue green. It's a green algae. But the major use of spirogyra is to prepare the biofuels, not for the bio fertilizers. Okay. So definitely you can rule out the two and you will get the answer as B. That is there the answer. But again, I'm telling you, if you're not confident about these, please let these kind of questions go because they are very trap based questions. They will always, um, you know, ask the UPSC will ask these kind of questions just to waste your time and to make you nervous. You don't have to worry about it. Last question number 50 is about the African swine fever. You have to tell me which statement is correct. The first says highly contagious viral disease. Now be very careful. If the fever is bacterial or viral, now this is the only thing UPSC can replace. So very, very careful. So uh, African swine fever is a viral disease. Yes, it is a viral disease. Affect both domestic and wild pigs. Yes, as the name is swine, you can say, you can easily understand. It is about the pigs. It causes severe economic loss to the pig farming sector. Of course, the, the word swine itself is making sense. And it is also making loss to the food security, the many uh, countries yes now third statement very careful it says it is a serious threat to the human health can be transmitted through direct contact consumption of the infected meat no now this is very important because normally what we are afraid of of the bird flu you know these are very contagious kind of diseases but be very careful the african swine fever is not a serious threat to humans and it does not even transmit that much so third statement is wrong just by eliminating look i'm only confident about the third one and if even if i had no idea about the other one i can simply eliminate the rest of the uh, topics rest of the statements and i'll get the right answer as b and as of now there is no effective vaccine treatment available it can only be controlled by culling the animal culling means killing you have to kill that particular stock whatever is having suffering from the asf that is the culling of the animals i hope so uh, the right answer has to be B. So I really hope guys that you have got some idea about how to approach the questions. I hope you have enjoyed today's uh, discussion. Also, you have enjoyed today's video. So what is your feedback and what you have learned, which particular part you have enjoyed the most? Do let me know in the comment section box and my best wishes for your upcoming UPSC 2024. So stay up with PMF IS and uh, prepare the exam and clear it with the flying colors. All my best wishes. God bless you. Take care. See you in the see you guys in the next video. And uh, signing off. Take care.